My journey began in 2005. That's when I got diagnosed with cancer. Six surgeries trying to cut it out, 39 radiation treatments trying to burn it out. My cancer doctor told me that they had done everything in their power, so we're gonna have to amputate. At that time, I just called myself an old backwoods country hillbilly. And now they tell me that I'm the most technically advanced man in the robotic field to this day. I've never been a rich man, but I've been a hard worker all my life. A little bit of caffeine keep me from getting mean. I'm uh, happy-go-lucky. I'm a jokester. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that I do, I try to do the best I can. I've been told, you know, with one arm, you can't do stuff. You know, there's, there's lots of things you can't do. Well, I'm not saying you're gonna do it fast, but eventually you can get it done. When in, I got cancer and then lost my arm, you know, I mean, it blew my mind. I mean, you know, why would this happen to me? Now, you know, I can't go out and take care of the family like I used to. And, but, you know, it's it's there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the best of it. I live my life by two rules. There's a reason for this season, and I always have PMA, positive mental attitude. I got introduced to Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab. They had a project to build the arm that was then revolutionizing prosthetics. The modular prosthetic limb, they wanted everything to move just like your natural hand, wrist, elbow, shoulder can do. And they needed the human factor now to come in and start testing and working with the arm. I got a chance to meet with Dr. Albert Chi at Johns Hopkins Hospital. Dr. Albert Chi found the nerves that used to go to Johnny's hand and moved them to healthy muscles in his remaining limb. He introduced me to targeted muscle renovation, and that is the surgery and technique that you use to work prosthetics with your mind. And I never in my wild stream thought that I would be the one. I mean, why would some backwards country hillbilly be the chosen one? I just got to go with the flow. Courtney, as much as we have worked together now, it's more than just a tech process relationship. We're just like a family. Johnny's unique in all kinds of ways. Ah! <laughs> but what makes him unique in how he controls the limb is that he has the osteointegrated implant. Osteo means bone, uh, integration, integration with the bone. So they bore out the center and it's, it's implanted into the medulla of the bone, the inner core. He's the first person to get the implant in the United States. The first time they told me, Johnny, I want you to think, close your hand. So I think closed hand and that, that robotic hand went closed like that, man, I come by. I want to come out of that chair so bad. Remember, deep breath, relax. The biggest motivation is I have a second chance on life. I could have lost my life with cancer. I had three of my children that were in the service to come back with all their extremities, but some of their buddies didn't. I want to be the best role model to forward on the prosthetic field. I want to better a lot of lives. Nice. Sometimes the biggest challenge is slowing Johnny down. Every single time we work together, he shows me that there's far more by pushing the envelope that results in practical application, and it's forcing me to adapt things that I might not have thought of before. <laughs> right now, with kind of the man-machine integration, Johnny has narrowed that gap to the smallest distance that it has ever been. 
Right now, the modular prosthetic limb is an in-lab arm only. If I was able to bring this arm home on a regular basis, it's unbelievable what I could probably accomplish with this arm. I'm going to push it as far as I can push it. I want to introduce you to the place that I stay each and every time I come up to Baltimore, the magnificent Hotel Chi. I can't believe we're here in this setting. I mean, everything we've done so far has been in the lab. And to see Johnny right now with the system in place, like it's just so incredible and so moving for me. This man means a lot to me. I mean, I put my life in his hands. And I mean, literally. Remember? He's beyond being my doctor. To me, he's just like my brother. Cheese. Yeah, cheese. Remember we were talking about how it's Johnny that challenges me? This is an example of that. All right. Up off the stove. There's times when Johnny pushes the envelope in a way that I don't feel comfortable with. Oh, no. What happened? Nothing. Give me a down real quick. Give me a down. Give me a down. All right. All right. Give me a down. Feel free to uh, point out. And the researcher Courtney is visibly uncomfortable during <laughs> during cooking dinner. I have to put a glove on this hand, or at least make an attempt to. Just be cautious. You are such a mother, you know. You're going to give me something. You want to find out if it's going to work. I'm going to work it. Cooking was, I mean, nerve-wracking, but now, in hindsight, I mean, it was amazing. We didn't practice at all. He was trailblazing it today. It's just that one step closer from this being a research system to something deliverable. Good job. I really do feel like we're at this crossroads between breakthrough surgery and breakthrough technology. Really, we're seeing this evolution of man and machine. It's gonna be light years beyond what is available out there. Bon appétit. Like I said before, I, you know, I don't know why I was chosen for this. I'm not the most intelligent man in the world. I'm not the most physical, strong man in the world, but it has given me a new sense of purpose. I'm just the, the Model T, or the Wright Brothers beginning of the technology. I'm showing you it does work, and every week, we're progressing farther and farther and farther and farther. My next step is I'm gonna be going and I'm gonna be getting sensory surgery done to where I'm supposed to be able to feel as good as your own natural limb. It's gonna be good. And we've just begun. <laughs>